So it's been a little more than a week since Donald Trump has been banned from Twitter and other social media platforms, and we're learning about the impact that this has had on the aggregate discourse with regard to the U.S. election, and it's honestly stunning, like shocking. I expected, you know, his ban from Twitter and social media to have a positive impact with regard to vitriol and hate and white supremacy and the spread of misinformation, but I didn't expect results to this extent. Um, this is... According to a study by Zignal Labs, misinformation specifically about the U.S. election fell by, get this, 73%, just by Donald Trump alone being banned. I did not expect the numbers to be this high because there are other actors and entities that spread misinformation at the behest of Donald Trump, far-right news outlets like Newsmax and OAN. But what this tells us is that Donald Trump was the most significant disseminator of propaganda and misinformation, at least when it comes to the election. And that is honestly astonishing. So according to Shona Ghosh of Business Insider, online misinformation about the U.S. election fell by as much as 73 percent in the week after President Trump was booted from Twitter and other social media sites. According to findings by Zignal Labs, conversations about election fraud fell from 2.5 million mentions to 688,000 mentions across several social media sites. The research house looked at conversations that spanned fraud, hacked machines, tampered ballots, and other conspiracies. The data indicates that tech platforms' ability to restrict the spread of falsehoods is an effective approach to containing misinformation online. Signal monitored social media sites for misinformation during the seven days from January 9th. The U.S. Capitol riots took place January 6th. Signal found that hashtags relating to the Capitol riots fell dramatically during the week after the suspensions. Mentions of the hashtags fight for Trump, hold the line, and the phrase march for Trump all fell around 95%. QAnon-specific hashtags also fell the week after Trump was suspended from Twitter, though mentions of the conspiracy and its supposed figurehead Q went up. So this is absolutely fascinating. We're not going to talk about the merits of Trump's ban, whether or not it was a good thing, because I addressed that in a separate video. But the fact that he was responsible for spreading that much misinformation single-handedly, it really goes to show you how important it is that we have leaders in power that actually are committed to the truth. And Donald Trump, I mean, whenever he would go on Twitter, he would complain about misinformation, or he would spread misinformation and complain about the election. And, you know, before he was banned, if you look at his timeline, like, tweet after tweet after tweet was labeled by Twitter that, you know, this was uh, not verified or election data analysts say that this is incorrect. It was astonishing. Like, the amount of misinformation that he was spreading was shocking, even for Donald Trump, even by his standards. And throughout the course of his presidency, you know, these last four years, he has told more than 30,000 lies. 30,000 lies. So, you know, altogether, when, when you see the impact that the president has on political discourse in the United States, it kind of makes you feel like you're going crazy. Like, it feels like you're being gaslit. Like, it feels like we're in this post-factual era where anything that somebody says, it can be true so long as we believe it, even if it isn't grounded in empirical reality. And that's really frustrating because going forward, like, as a country, how do we, how do we communicate with one another if we don't even agree on basic facts? Like the fact that COVID-19 is a thing. It's not a hoax, that it's actually a thing. Or the fact that the election was not stolen from Donald Trump. There's zero evidence that that is in fact the case. Widespread voter fraud is not a thing. So if we can't even establish like a basis of the reality, you know, facts about the reality that we live in, I just, I don't know how going forward we, we can be united ever. But this shows you that it really makes a difference what the president says like his bully pulpit is very very important and impactful and what he says makes a substantial difference because if your ban leads to a 73 percent decrease in misinformation about the election that shows that you were doing a lot of damage to the country a lot of damage and for the spread of misinformation according to this one study to fall by that much i kind of feel optimistic that maybe in the post-Trump era, assuming that he won't 
be influential or as influential as he is now, which uh, of course he won't be. Um, you know, I'm hoping that folks who were part of the Donald Trump cult will come back to reality. I'm hoping that they, you know, won't be as easily misled. And even if there's going to be disagreement with me and these MAGA chuds who are part of the Trump cult or you and these MAGA chuds, at a minimum, like all that we can hope for and should hope for is that when it comes to reality, we all agree on certain things, right? We can disagree on tax policy, healthcare policy, and I'll argue because I believe in my position. But if we don't even agree that certain things are real, like a global pandemic, which is not controversial in other countries, or that the election was stolen, like if, if we can't agree on like these very basic things and facts aren't persuading people, I just, I can't see how that society survives. But this tells me that maybe we have a chance with Trump being out. I mean, certainly we've got a lot of work to do, but at least when it comes to misinformation and snapping these folks who are part of that cult out of reality, getting them back into the real world, maybe, maybe we can start the process of deprogramming them. I think that most of them can be brought back to reality. It'll take time, but some of them are too far gone and we're going to have to reckon with that. Uh, but you know, this, this is just honestly shocking to me. Like I, I was flabbergasted when I read this. 73%. Trump really was harmful to, you know, American political discourse. And that's just from, like, the public side. Like, what he did when it comes to policies, it perhaps was arguably even more damage. But this, I mean, wow, this is definitely, definitely interesting.